proton pump inhibitors explained in four minutes. Let's begin. PPIs, or proton pump inhibitors, are a class of medication that are commonly used to treat conditions such as acid reflux, heartburn, and esophagitis. They can also be used for the prevention and treatment of peptic ulcers. These medications are mostly all administered orally, but can also be given intravenously to treat acute stomach bleeding from peptic ulcers. PPIs can be identified by their suffix prazole. For example, pantoprazole, or its brand name pantaloc, or tecta. Lanzoprazole is also very popular, or its brand name prevacid, as well as dexlanzoprazole, rebiprazole, and omeprazole. However, how do proton pump inhibitors work? Well, generally, proton pump inhibitors work by reducing the amount of excess acid produced by our stomach. In our stomach, the parietal cells are responsible for the production and release of stomach acid. When stimulated by gastrin, histamine, or acetylcholine, the parietal cells act to release protons into the stomach via the proton pump. The proton pump acts to move protons into the stomach and also move potassium back into the parietal cell. These protons bind to chloride ions to form hydrochloric acid, increasing the acidity of our stomach. Now, proton pump inhibitors are prodrugs that are activated by the acidic environment of our stomachs. These drugs then bind to these proton pump inhibitors and prevent the release of protons reducing the amount of hydrochloric acid produced by our stomachs. This results in reduced symptoms of acid reflux and enables the healing of esophagitis and GI ulcers. Proton pump inhibitors take at least two to three days to reach maximum effect, and the effects of each dose lasts for approximately one to two days. When discontinuing a PPI, it may be necessary to slowly reduce the dose as sudden discontinuation may cause a rebound effect of overproduction of stomach acid, resulting in increased acid reflux symptoms. Moving on to the side effects, with short-term use of PPIs, the most common side effects include headache, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and nausea. However, with long-term daily use, more rare side effects are possible. There is an increased risk of infections, such as C. difficile infection, which manifests as really bad diarrhea, fever, and stomach pain. The risk of developing pneumonia may also be increased. This is possibly due to the role our stomach acid plays in immune function. There is also a risk of deficiency in vitamin B12, magnesium, iron, and calcium as sufficient stomach acid is suspected to be necessary in the absorption of these vitamins and minerals. Calcium deficiency can lead to other complications, such as osteoporosis and eventually hip fractures. Chronic kidney disease is also a possible complication.